our first podcast from the Live Studio Net from uh, 2019. I'm Carly, and I'm joined by Roger. Hi, everyone. And Tenny. Hello. We have some pretty big news to discuss, one of them being our game that has been in development for a very long time, and it's finally coming out this month, and it did not turn into a different game in the meantime, and that would be Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh-uh. That we know of. Good that one. We know, that's true. So I want to know, because it's interesting that not everyone got into the series when it started, and everyone had a different way to get into a series. There's a bunch of games. It's very hard to explain the series to people or to get all of the names right. So how did you guys get into the series, and how long had you been playing Kingdom Hearts? I'll start with you, Roger. Uh, I've only been playing since uh, Birth by Sleep, but I've like followed Kingdom Hearts Online for a, a bit longer than that. That is a really good game to start, because I would say, considering that yeah. that's a prequel, at least it, it's, the series is going to make more sense to you. Yeah, it's basically the first game where they where they actually had a had their final idea of what they wanted the fr- franchise to, to look like. Oh, that might be a little bit optimistic because it might have changed some idea well, between them. Well, and well they knew <laughs> who who Xehanort was, at least. That's true. How about you, Tenny? Um, I think I played it... I um, So I played the first game and it was just the one game. I think it might have been a year or so after it came out. Um, And I loved it back then. And I did play Kingdom Hearts 2. And I played a little bit of Birth by Sleep, but I did kind of um, get lost along the way because of how many games there were and how many consoles it spanned that I'm like, I can't buy all of that just to play this one franchise. (laughs) So I got an idea. Yeah. So I'm probably not as knowledgeable because I know that there's like a lot of characters who have popped in that I see them in trailers and in artwork and I have no idea who they are. So we will find out, I guess. Were you tempted to, at all to pick up one of the uh, collections, like 1.5 and what have you? I did buy um, one of the collections and I started playing through it, but I think it was for the PS3. And I think that I might just go out and get the complete, there's like the Story So Far collection for the PS4 that has everything. I think I might just go get that and start playing through. That would be the best idea because it has everything in there and it makes everything simpler or as simple as that mess of a storyline is. Yeah, same yeah. with me. I've got the the first collection with uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 in it for the PS3, but I didn't get very far in it. No, it's the same thing, because I bought like 1.5 on PS3, and it just so happens to be around the time that the PS4 came out, so that was probably not a good idea, so it wasn't going to use my PS3 again. But I do have like the a PlayStation 4, the 2.5 and 2.8, and I'm not going to buy the story so far, because I already got this thing. They do seem to like really go out of their way to milk as much as possible for the series before Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out. But yeah, they really did. Mm-hmm. I I I've been playing Kingdom Hearts since they since they came out. I remember like seeing the trailer from Kingdom Hearts, the, the first one, on TV and being like mesmerized because it looked amazing, and at the same time being really skeptical of. Uh, mix between Final Fantasy and Disney but I was 12 so once a game came out I just fell in love with it and played it all the time and it's just, it was the same thing with Kingdom Hearts 2 I finished Kingdom Hearts 2 uh, on my birthday when I turned 13 so I've been waiting for Kingdom Hearts 3 now for 15 years which is more than half of my life because I'm 28 now 
Yeah, I played Kingdom Hearts 2. Like, I, I remember I got it on launch day, and it took me two weeks to beat it. And so I feel you. It's been, it's been a long wait for Kingdom Hearts 3 and all this other other stuff that came out in between time that I kind of, fi I figured at first, was like I figured, oh, since they're on like these handheld games, they can't be that important. But no, they're pretty important canon parts of the story. To be fair, as much of a fan as I've been of the series, I was not willing to buy a DS or a 2DS to just play these other games. So I only really just play Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 2 and Breath of Sleep. I love Breath of Sleep, especially Aqua. I love her best of all the protagonists that you get she's the best one yeah i've heard that the fa the fandom seems pretty enamored of her i'm not really excited because like but you haven't how much did you know of the story in birth by sleep um i know that i think aqua is the only one that makes it out alive or not corrupted or whatever <laughs> it's complicated to what happens to ventus and Sarah, but yeah, she's the only one alive by the end. Because the game is divided obviously in three sections that you play at each of the characters. You, if you want to follow it as a story, you should start with Terra, then you go to Ventus, and then Aqua's last. Once you finish all three of them, you get the actual final part of the game where you play as Aqua. Okay. Because the other, the other two are lost. And she, by the end, trying to save Terra, ends up stuck. <laughs> The role of darkness. And that's where she's been for the past 10 years. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So what are you guys expecting from Kingdom Hearts 3? Uh, I think a lot more emphasis on the like the Disney side of things. Yeah, no, Mura said in an interview that the whole concept of combining all the Final Fantasy characters together is not really that revolutionary anymore because ever since the first two Kingdom Hearts game, it's now been done a million times. So I'm not sure if they're even going to have a lot of any of the Final Fantasy characters. I hope they do. They won't. Like, Cloud's voice actor hasn't recorded any lines. So That's lame. That to me is kind of ridiculous because the entire point of Kingdom Hearts that it was a mix between Final Fantasy and Disney. And then you can see as the game started progressing, they, the Final Fantasy characters started like, getting pushed to the side. And there was a lot of the original characters from Kingdom Hearts and the Disney characters. Yeah, I want to see more of an integration between the two. I've always felt that Kingdom Hearts could be as fun as it was a lot better if there was more integration and less separation. But I'm kind of bummed, especially because some of the characters were pretty important to the plot, like Squall and Aerith and Yuffie go, got their thing going on, first in Traverse Town in the first game, then in Hollow Bastion, a.k.a. Radiant Garden in Kingdom Hearts 2. Like, they seemed... Um, they were pretty they seem kind of important to the plot so i'd be kind of sad if they're left out without any explanation mm -hmm. the thing is it is kind of interesting because they they are important they they were like the group they brought sora and explained everything to so what was going on everywhere well the, th the thing is that they like in every one of those spin-off games they in introduced more original characters and no more doesn't seem to be willing to let go of a single one of them. So he's like he's full up on uh, Final Fantasy styled uh, characters. I am excited about the game. Because one, the gameplay looks amazing. Because I've been waiting a really long time for Kingdom Hearts 3. And I want to see like where the story goes. However, this is like the culture of all the storyline they've been carrying on for years. And considering that it became a mess and it's extremely convoluted i'm not sure they can pull off like closing all of that together yeah i'm not sure i'm not counting um the entire story making a lot of sense but i do think it'll still be fun the graphics look gorgeous so i think that 
I'm anticipating a fun game, a good time, probably not anything that's going to blow my mind, but I still think it'll be fun to play. Yeah, there's one thing about Kingdom Hearts, even when the storylines were in particularly good, some of the more weaker games, gameplay-wise, it was always very fun to play. And basically, the like the Disney worlds mostly had their their own self-contained stories. So even if you didn't understand what's going on with with uh, say and North and stuff, you can still have a good time. And that's the other really interesting and exciting thing about Kingdom Hearts Three because they brought in new worlds from Disney that people will always really wanted to see in Kingdom Hearts, like Toy Story. And they're gonna bring Big Hero Six, which was great. I'm kind of surprised they didn't do more with Record Ball because that seemed to like fit in the best. Both like video games and stuff. Yeah, but it seems like Ralph was only really a summon in the game. Maybe it did, maybe Disney didn't want like a Record Ralph world, or I'm not sure. I'm not sure that is, but you know, maybe. I'm assuming they could, there's definitely going to be more Kingdom Hearts games in the future because that makes, all, makes them a lot of money. Yeah, I, ex- I expect this will finish off Sora's story and we'll get another game with uh, Lee and Roxas or something. Or an entirely new protagonist altogether. So that brings me to my final question on Kingdom Hearts. What do you think is going to happen to Sora? And also the rest of the characters. Sora, I expect to just go back to... Uh, Destiny Islands. Maybe him and Kyrie will end up together. Uh, they already yeah, together? they'll they'll hold they'll hold a whole dance and everything. This will be very graphic. It'll be very graphic with holding hands. <laughs> very everyone dies. Would they really go that route with Kingdom Hearts though? I mean no. I don't know if I anticipate that it would be like a super sad ending. Me um I think that Sora probably at the end will get a happy ending. I do kind of question about Riku. Yeah, he does seem like the like the one from the main trio most likely to die. Yeah, I feel like something's going to happen. Riku is going to sacrifice himself to save Sora or help Sora or get sucked into some darkness somewhere. And then it'll be just Sora and Kairi going back to Destiny Island without him. And it'll be like, they say, and it'll be, they saved the day, but they lost Riku, so it's bittersweet. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe they're like, because you would expect that to happen, they'll do something completely different, and all, of, all three of them will survive. Maybe. I know Twilight Dawn will be the hub world for this game. So I, I'm, I also expect, like, Roxas to... Roxas and his gang to have a good ending, so I'm less hopeful about Terra and uh, Ventus and Aqua. Like I think one of those won't it won't end up well at the end. I mean, there's something that's already really depressing. I do hope they don't do anything to Aqua because they already show her supposedly going evil, and I don't like that at all. I want Aqua to be protected because she's great and she's been in a very miserable situation for ten years. I want her to be happy. That would be ideal, but who knows? So from that, a game that is coming out to one that's no ending and not in the most, uh, say, mess of a situation. You know, we find out when this is 15, 16, when would that ever happen? Anyways, 15. <laughs> so we have some news a couple of months ago that Tabata was leaving the company, starting his new company with a very generic name. And now the future DLC from 15 canceled, except for episode Arden. So you guys play more of 15 than I do, because I played it when it came out and never touched it again. What do you think about that? It was an awkward way for everything to end. Everybody had their hopes up, and... It kind of feels like the rug was just pulled out from underneath all of us. I thought that the DLC, I wasn't sure if I felt like having Noctis DLC, since he was like the the protagonist of the entire game, was really necessary. But at the same time, 
So many of the fans were excited for it. The fandom wanted this. And to have like a proper big ending to something to the like I because 15 was dragged out so long to just have such an abrupt okay we're we're done just seems like not the best way to go about it but I guess they can't be helped do you think there was some like serious issues behind the scenes with between Tabata and Square Enix I don't I, know I think um, Tabata ahead, just right. wanted to just wanted to go ahead and do his own thing. But you think it's maybe part of that is maybe he was burned out by the way like Square Enix handles their product. Yeah, I wonder how like how much control did Tabata still have and how much was it the higher up saying keep doing this, keep doing this, keep getting us money. Um not to mention the haters of the series want to put a lot of blame on Tabata, but I really think that's misplaced. He was thrown onto the project to just finish it because with Nomura, it probably would still be in development <laughs> um, because Nomura was trying to do too much at once. And I'm not sure who's, whose fault that is if it was the higher ups for putting him on 15 in the first place, or I don't know. Um, I I personally got the impression at first that there might have been some bad blood, but that might have just been gaming sites trying to be clickbaity and get views, so I'm not really sure what the truth actually is. But at least to me, being that he was brought in towards the end to try to fix that mess, that he had to like basically try to patch in what his idea ended up being and mixing that with what Nomura wanted to be. Because you can see that between this when the game originally came out, because you had the first half of the game, there was more his idea. And then the second half is just basically whatever they could patch in together to get, get the game out. We know that when that game originally came out, that game was not ready to be out. And then they had to like start adding patches in DLC to have a complete game. Or the closest they could get to a complete game. Yeah. And that to me might have played a part in him just after basically being in this situation for two years, just wanting to do something different and wanting to go his own way. Yeah, I think I think like he was I was given that new studio like Luminos Productions and he was still stuck to the uh fifteen pro- fifteen property for like a lot longer. And I, I don't think he liked that liked that idea. How do you see like him like Final Fantasy XV as a whole now? Because I said I haven't played a game since it came out and I finished it. And I haven't I, I mentioned this before and I stopped mentioning the podcast because I just don't care for the game at all. I don't like Tabata either. Now that playing having played the original game, having played through the patches and most of the DLCs that came out, how do you see fifteen? now um well i have not gone through a main story playthrough with the patches yet i know i probably should just uh, it probably wouldn't take me long to get through but i am i am curious to see i think that there were some story improvements that needed to be made it does seem a little sloppy as in like I almost wish that I hadn't played it, that I had waited until now to start with everything in there so I wouldn't know what it was like at first and then what it's like now. Um, I do think the separate DLCs were fun. Um, They seemed like more of an added bonus than just we're going to try to patch the story and rewrite it and fix it because they fit in much better. So it kind of, we get to play as his characters in other parts and like other scenes that we don't get to see. So to me, the main issue being here, most people that play video games do not finish a video game. So most people that play 15, and I don't mean like Final Fantasy fan, most people that actually play Final Fantasy 15 
only play the original version of Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 15. Probably never finished it. Those who finished it probably never went back to the game again. And they don't know that other stuff will add it in later to actually make it in a complete game. I don't see this as a viable way to continue doing a video game in single player player video games that you're killing people. You already paid full price for a video game that wasn't complete. So now we're going to ask you to pay more money to actually get a complete video game. Well, yeah, that's true. With the uh, the canceled DS- DLC caused them to have a $33 million loss. So I don't think Square Enix now uh, looking back on it thinks it's a viable uh, business model for a v- for a for a final for a final fantasy game either hopefully was the dlc the reason for the loss i thought that there were other factors in there as well i don't think they from the dlc that they did release that they made up the money or they made enough money as they thought they would because again most people probably didn't touch it like gamers in general and the way that like video games are net like video game companies are moving right now is to like get as much money out of people even though they already like paid full price for a video game yeah oh and another thing too that i just thought of is that 15 takes up so much space on the hard drive it's kind of insane i am running out of room on my ps4 i need to get an external drive for it I need to delete things, but I don't really want to delete 15 yet because I still do want to go in and do some more stuff on it. And I don't want to have to wait 10 hours for everything to re-download next time I want to play the game. The the issue being that a lot of the games that are open world, they're going like be going to get bigger files because there's so much in there. What When you have a lot of those games, the best option is then just to buy another hard drive to put on the PS4 that has a lot more space. And it's, it's fairly easy to like get it open and switch the, the hard drive with one then. Because I think the the one that comes with a PS4 has one terabyte. And you can add one that has two terabytes or three terabytes. Mine's not even a terabyte. Mine's like 500 gigabytes. Ah, because that's the original PS4. The PS4 Pro has one terabyte. I suppose I got the blue uncharted ps4 but it's still a regular ps4 that one looks really nice though it is kind of nice i have matching controllers Ooh, fancy so episode arden is like the final dlc for final fantasy 15 after that it's over are you guys excited to play episode arden i actually think it will be fun to play as him because i did actually like him as a villain. I liked his personality, so I think it could actually be fun and maybe funny to play as him. Yeah, I, th- I think it'll. I think it'll be uh, better because, like, uh, with with the Choco Bros, they, it had to take place during their absences from the group. But with Arden, they hopefully have a little bit more, a little bit more freedom. We did all. You did. Mainly you guys who still play the game also lost a couple of DLCs. The only one that I would have been interested in playing was episode Aranea, and we're not getting that. Yeah, I really think that maybe if Square Enix had toned down their scope for how much they wanted to do, maybe Tabata could have finished it because maybe episodes Noctis and Luna weren't necessary. Maybe they could have just said, okay, episode Aranea, we're going to finish it off with the villain. And then that could be done. Like they, they should have had a, like a more of a set ending, but it can, it did feel like they started just piling stuff on. I feel like this already an episode not this is called Final Fantasy 15. What was the f- the point of giving um, like a DLC to the protagonist of your video game? Yeah, that's my thoughts too. We are it's cuz we we already had episode Noctis. Why we don't need it again. <laughs> and with Luna, you already had a movie where you're supposed to like show her as an actual character and they didn't they fail at that. It she's horrendous in 15. I don't know 
about the stuff that was added in later, but what was originally given wasn't good. <laughs> I, you, I made my feelings on her character before very clear that I hated her version of the character that Stella was like replaced for her. I don't see the point of two years later trying to do an episode and start like trying to get people to actually no see we actually made a, a character here. Yeah, that would probably be. As much as I was thinking we didn't need an episode, Luna, between her and Noctis, hers is the one that at least kind of made more sense because we didn't get a lot out of, as much out of Luna as I thought we were going to. So I could understand wanting to maybe develop her a little bit more. The problem is with that, that was what Kingsley was supposed to be. Once that failed, at least for me, it became obvious that she wasn't going to be good at all in 15. It doesn't matter what they add to it. Her, she's still going to have, gonna die halfway through 15. Her death is going to still be garbage because that was bullshit. It's like she gets, just gets slapped and get killed and that's it. So I don't, see, I don't see the point of it. I know like people that actually like 15 would probably want to see her more of her and her character actually explore more. I just, there was never, at least for me, there was never anything in there worth exploring. Yeah, the whole thing about the Oracle seemed interesting, but that wasn't so much her as like a bigger thing that she was a part of. Yeah, she just, there, there wasn't a character in there, an actual character. Now that like we're 15 over, where do you think they're gonna go with the next game? To be honest, I would like to see a return to something a little bit more classic. I I do enjoy 15 and we're on a Final Fantasy VII centered website. But as far I mean a good story is a good story, but as far as settings, if we're if you're to judge a a game based on just the setting I do kind of prefer the more fantasy oriented um type game something a little bit more medieval yeah or may maybe something that has a little bit more integration of medieval with technology maybe something I know the world of 12 did like a good a good job of like it's not like a modern technological society, but they still had a lot of their own type of technology um, that came, like it, that came out of, of like different sources. Um, I really enjoyed like the world of nine. Um, the world of ten was kind of cool, where like technology was was actually a thing of the past. So I kind of I would like to see them do something like that. I agree. I I would even I would even go for uh further back like I want to see airships that look more like like sail ships instead of big machines like they were in te like like just massive machines like they were in ten and ten or twelve. So just like ships with sails, but they're in the sky. Yeah, that would be cool. I do like that. Like in four or like six. I remember maybe two years ago, we did a podcast about, and one of the questions that we asked was, what kind of Final Fantasy game did you want to see going forward? And I remember saying, I wanted like something really interested, like with uh, very fantasy with dragons and something very Imperial Japan and all that stuff. And then I got that in 14 with Heaven's Word and Stormblood. I don't really know about where they should go next. I wish they do more. They go back to having a different variety of characters in your party as they used to have, because I feel that's more RPG than just having like four people that are very all that interested and fascinating from each other. I won't ask how long did you think like the next Final Fantasy game will take to come out, because their track record is terrible. We don't know when the remake of Final Fantasy VII is going to come out, if it ever comes out. Because I don't, I'm not very hopeful in Square Enix. Yeah, I at, at best it's going to be next year, 2020 for the remake. You think? Yeah. I want to see no, but you're probably right. <laughs> I can guarantee you that I will finish Final Fantasy VII before the remake comes out, 
and bear in mind that I have I played that game for the first time when I was seven years old. I never finished it, and I'll still finish it before they release the movie. Well, you better. No, but um, I think that the one thing that Square needs to do is they need to not announce a game until they are a substantial amount, a substantial way through it. They should not have announced the remake when they did. They should have waited another couple years. Unless they were trying to get in front of any leaks that they anticipated might happen. Because I suppose it's a possibility that it could have leaked. And it's it's nice to not have to um, argue over remake theories anymore. I think it was leaking already, like a, a week before the announcement. Yeah, but usually usually people weren't believing them because it was leaks all every single year when E3 will come out and it keeps happening and happening, people was like, okay, this is this is a lie. Yeah, there's all there was always a website somewhere saying, We might be getting a remake. It happened so often that people were like, bullshit. It was a boy who cried wolf kind of a situation. Okay, so with that, we're gonna leave you. Uh Hope you enjoy Kingdom Hearts 3 because it's coming out in Japan in, on the 25th and for the rest of us it's coming out on the 29th which is good because I have guess a worldwide release. Hope you enjoy the game and we'll see you next time. See ya. Goodbye. Music featured on this podcast is courtesy of Incompetech.com.